Welcome back to Adventures in LARPing in a segment I like to call Costuming Corner. In this segment, we will take a particular character and costume it up down to the, all of the details that we can and go over it to show you, give you some ideas and show you exactly what kind of thing goes into really detailing and fleshing out a character. Today, we have with us my lovely wife, Valerie. Hello. How are y'all? And she is dressed as a noble lady from a fantasy LARP. Now, a couple of things that I'd like to point out here is that we have done a lot of work, or she has done a lot of work. I haven't done anything. But she's <laughs> done a lot of work by hand. Now, there, you can go out and buy certain things and pieces, and in some cases, we have purchased some things here. But those little modifications really are what sets it apart from what we have going from a costume that you'd wear at Halloween versus something that you can truly LARP in. Now, I've got a couple of questions for you. First off, uh, where did you come by? How did you put together the, we'll start with the costuming itself and then we'll get down to some of the details. Okay. Tell me about it. Well, the costume I actually did make. It is a Liz Elizabethan pattern. Um, you can get it at any of your craft stores um, or online patterns. Um, if you are not crafty and cannot sew, you can go to your local um, Halloween store or costume store and pick And then up start something. with something. Start, now, start with something. I will say, this is an excellent time of year for costuming and LARP. You have all of the costume stores. They have all sorts of base things that you can take and enhance on. The key is enhancing on them. This is also an excellent time, especially in Central Texas, for picking up patterns on the cheap from your local craft stores that people use for various Renaissance fairs. So definitely an extra time for that, uh, an extra good time for that. So what I have here is I have obviously a uh, corset. It is um, a really nice fabric that I found. Um, I have an overskirt and an underskirt. And with the underskirt, you will see that I um, have nice little squares that I hand embroidered. Adding um, special trim, like you see with the um, green, uh, the uh, feathers here, my little flowers, um, seeing the trim here, adding those little special touches to any costume that you may find or pick up. Also, um, you can go to your local thrift stores and find um, uh, wedding gowns, um, different, um, different uh, Again, all kinds of things yeah. to modify. Mm -hmm. Dresses, different kinds of dresses you can modify. Sure. Yeah, especially around Halloween. It's, yes. That's where I get most of my costuming pieces. Yes, so Halloween is excellent. So, okay. so before Halloween, you've got all of the, the costumes at the Halloween shop. After Halloween, they're at the thrift stores even cheaper. Mm -hmm. Now, you said something about bases at the costume stores. What are you looking for in a base that you get from, say, the Halloween spirit stores that pop up right around now? Well, what if I'm going to a thrift store or a costume store, anything that appeals to me. Obviously, you want a nice full skirt. Um, you can also get different skirts, different long uh, wedding dress skirts, different um, uh, even bridesmaids dresses. And you can cut them and repurpose them. It's very, very easy to take um, a skirt and sew a hem in it. Well, let me ask, what do you think about some of the, the outfits, the costumes that are available around? Um, I know you have some of the there's some of the, the bag, costume comes in a bag versus some of the things that are a little pricier and off the shelf. Uh, I know that there's a little difference in material and stuff, but when you're looking for it in a LARP, sec a LARP sort of a stance, um, is it worth it to pay the little extra more for the better material outfit? Well, for me, it's a little bit different. I cannot really purchase over-the-counter stuff because I'm a larger woman, obviously. But if you are able to fit into those sizes and uh, you find something, there's a lot of wonderful costumes online now, mm -hmm. and you can find some you know, wonderful, wonderful costumes. Excellent, excellent. And now, I know that you mentioned the trim as something that truly really sets off the, the outfit, and I would like to point out uh, that with any LARP outfit, at all the trim adding a little bit of trim in this case it, it's kind of a bling sort of a trim I think I'm not sure how well the camera picks that up but it's really sparkly and really up there 
but even adding little bits of trim or just an offset color here and there can really take something from a basic outfit to something better, a higher stance, real easily. Now, that also leads into some of the other little bits and pieces. So without some of these other things, I could see you look like you're ready for a Ren Fest. You've got a nice attire on. But to go from I'm a rich woman to I'm a noble lady, I think we've got a few extra additions here. So the first off, tell me some more about this fan that you have. So um, it's very easy to uh, buy or make a fan. Um, you can so this, purchase this a fan. So this is one that you created. This is one I cr created. There are a lot of fans online you can find or mm -hmm. at local um, craft or uh, costume stores. But I did make this, and it was very, very simple. Mm -hmm. It is just a wooden dowel, it, um, some decoration that you can find at your Hobby Lobby stores or any craft stores, a bunch of fans I just hot glued to the wood, painted it, put a ribbon on it, and there you go. It was a very simple couple of minute um, afternoon project. And I, I really like, not only is it a nice, useful fan, it, it does work well, yes? Yes, it does. For, for <laughs> air and for attracting the cats. Um, <laughs> but what I really like is the shape of it overall. It doesn't look like, I mean, it doesn't fold up and everything and fit nice in your hand, pocket like any other sort of fan was, but it, the way that you've, you've constructed it out on the long stick there, you could definitely take that and if your LARP has, uh, uh, if you're going for a human sort of a look, you could go with one direction. If you're going with a, a different race, say an, an elf might use a thinner sort of a rod or something to that effect, or some sort of a lizard man or, or e more evil character might find a stick off of a tree all gnarled and stuff. So that's that's really something that could be altered real easily to get the overall look, but still have a functional fan that really looks completely different from anything that anybody else is doing. That's, that's a, a, an excellent tidbit there. Now, I noticed that aside from your trim, you also are sparkling in a little bit beyond. Yes. So we've got extra matching things and matching necklace and, and a bracelet there. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so these, uh, obviously, for a LARP, these are not real stones of any sort. They are, you know, giant here. But tell me, tell me some more about where you found something like this. So here in Austin, this um, I was able to find all of the uh, tiara and all my jewelry at Sand Moon. Um, it was very, very inexpensive. You can also find it at any other jewelry place or craft place. Some of your uh, crafting places, if you look on in the wedding section, um, will have some jewelry, especially tiaras. Um, and online as well. Um, online is great to purchase stuff as well, especially uh, accessories like jewelry um, mm -hmm. for very inexpensively. I see. And so these stones, I, I, I noticed in messing with them earlier that there's a little bit of weight to them. So I guess yes. they're, they're uh, aside from not being real stones, uh, they do have that excellent sparkle. I yes. don't think that they're quite glass, but they're definitely something that's gonna stand up to uh, use over time. Um, and, and then you do mention the tiara on top, and I think that as far as being a noble woman, this is something that really sets off the fact that you are noble. You've got something on your head, whether it's a tiara or a coronet or something that says, I am not just a rich lady, I've got a title of some sort, bow to me peons. And, <laughs> now, um, I would normally wear a tiara anyway in my normal life, but you know. There's lots of bowing at my house. <laughs> Now I noticed, and, and then it, de it definitely goes well with some of the hairpins in your hair. Now, one thing that you might not realize in just in looking at it and what we're talking about, this is not her real hair. No, it's not. Of course it's not. Um, I did find, again, at your Halloween store, um, after ha uh, ha Halloween, the a uh, couple of days after Halloween, you can find really, really inexpensive wigs um, for half off. And I, that's when I go and get my wigs. The day after Halloween, I actually take a vacation day from work <laughs> yes, and just does. go around to all of the Halloween stores because now everything is at least 50% off. So things like wigs and even a, even a, a cheaper Halloween wig 
even were it not on sale, this it, it truly looks uh, amazing with the, the rest of the outfit and was incredibly easy to style and do. Mm -hmm. And if something should happen to it, it's not exactly that big a deal to replace it. Yep, mm -hmm. especially when you're running around and heat and Texas heat is really horrible for hair. <laughs> so if you want to have a nice hairdo throughout your whole experience, wigs are the way to go. That is an excellent tip right there. Um, I know that uh, some folks will have certain hairstyles and certain hair arrangements and things like that. And then once you're running around all day, things can happen. And that's, that's an excellent uh, tidbit right there yes. to be able to keep that going. Well, thank you very much for being on the show, dressing up with us. And um, um, it's, been, uh, it's been wonderful to have you in here. Um, see all everybody else uh, right back here at Adventures in LARPing.